an auto worker. I hitchhiked to work for 30 years, and I couldn't believe the beautiful things and people I saw. So I just want to say I appreciate everything you guys are doing, and, you know, let's keep our minds open to everything we can do, and let's try to get it online, and let's let, let's let our youth try to be part of the answer also. Thank you. Jack Miner. <clears throat> Good evening, Jack Miner, 7th Ward. Is this a perfect plan? Of course not. But is it an excellent plan? I think so. Public has had, I believe, ample opportunity to be included and involved in the implementation, in the planning. And more importantly, I found the planning staff and the uh, various commissions to be very responsive, not always in agreement, but very responsive to all the comments that were made about the planning. I applaud the work that has gone into this document. I look forward to its implementation. But it's only a plan, and I think some of the speakers tonight need to realize it is only a plan, and I pledge to keep after our future elected officials, to seek timely implementation of the plan and appropriate revisions when necessary. But it's not my job, it's all of our citizens' job to see that the plan gets implemented over the next few years and revised as necessary. So I urge all of us to keep after our elected officials to make sure that this plan is implemented and it timely revised as needed. Thank you. Patricia Taylor. Patricia Taylor. Jacob Brzezinski. Brzezinski. I see the progress happening at Chevy in the Hole. There's numerous properties are being torn down and demolished. We're cleaning up uh, much of the area all around there. The EPA is improving the soil. Uh, a number of points. One is that we're demolishing properties and we're not, we're not deconstructing them. There's so many resources that could be utilized if we actually went in and took the lumber the hardware, there's all these resources we could rebuild our city with, and they're being sent to a landfill right now. Uh, and I have a proposal that is, we are planning on tearing down the Genesee Towers. It's, it's the tallest structure in Genesee County. Uh, I'd say we take the, the spire, the highest point in our entire county, and use that. Don't just scrap it as scrap metal. Use it in a project, a public art project that can display our redevelopment efforts. Secondly, uh, I am an urban planner by hobby, and I have been studying the site of Chevy and Hole extensively, and I would like to build a monument in the center of the valley on the pillars in the river. I have detailed plans. It would be both a park for canoeists and a monument dedicated to our redevelopment efforts. Uh, each ward would have a display uh, recognizing both the community and the organizations within that area. 
I have designed this project to resemble a church in the center of the valley. So I too am developing a master plan in a smaller sense. Desiree Dwell. Thank you so much. I'm Desiree Duell from Seventh Ward. I also sit on the advisory board for community facilities and infrastructure. And I also sat on the steering committee for the Our Town NEA grant. I'm a public artist and I have been involved extensively in the city for the past two years, um, working with artists and art organizations and specifically working on the Arts Master Plan. Through several um, community meetings and gatherings with artists, it came out that it was really important that the city create um, an arts authority. And this was in multiple drafts of the master plan until the last draft that we saw. And this is extremely important because public art is inherently political and always has been. It's been a reflection of governments, states, since the Renaissance. And if there is not an authority in the sense that it is not reflective of the values of a community or its people, including class, race, multiple issues, um, then what is public art for? Is it for private investors to show their wealth? I think not. It is no longer acceptable as best practice to work in that way. Therefore, an arts authority would be comprised of government officials, community members, and artists. It also would provide governance and streamline the process for artists working in the public realm. And with that, um, there are things that institutions cannot do that an authority can do. Public art is outside building code, but there are extremely uh, serious environmental factors that go into public art. Do I have to cite a house that's sitting in a parking lot that is peeling highly toxic material as we speak because there is no oversight on that project. Public art is inherently political and has to be reflective of the values of a community and its people. Many artists have endorsed this and I hope that the Arts Authority can be named in the plan. Without that, there will be no oversight as to who will be making the policies about art that should be collective and reflective of our city. Thank you. Want was Davis. Yes, thank you for having this forum today. This is something of importance and this is a historical moment. May it be adopted or not. Um, I have a little reservations. I think a plan is good, but a good plan is good and I believe that success is the mother stemming from an ideal and a great plan. What I looked in the plan, I didn't see anything about mentor trophy in dealing with our kids. 
Our kids have become mentally unstable. We just recently had three murders over the weekend, and prior to that, we had eight murders in one week. I have not read anything in there that curtails some of this or bring any resolution to some of the problems that is L in our city and dealing with our kids and how we can bring some form of morale back into their life because a lot of them have become morally bankrupt. And I haven't seen anything in there. And that raises a great alarm to me. I want to make a statement. I was watching the news the other night, two nights ago, and they didn't show the face of these kids but they was in gangs. And they made a powerful statement. And the statement that they made was, we're only in gangs because we have nothing else to do. I turned my TV off right after that and said, I don't need to see the news no more. That was a message saying, help. Find me something else to do, and I can do something positive with my life if you can only institute something that's positive that would allow me to do something. I mean, it was a message that I haven't heard in so long. It was a cry without actually shedding a tear from the children. If children is telling you what they need and what they want, and we're not instituting anything that can uh, uh, appease that need, then we're failing. Then we're failing. Because 20 years from now, they are the ones who's going to be in the position that we are in right now. And if we cannot properly prepare them to be in the position that we are in right now, then we fail. And I keep saying we fail because I always deal with the five Ps. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. We have to properly prepare our kids to grow up and have some form of morale have some form of value, but most importantly, have the value of human life. And when they have value of human life with inside of them, they value your life. They don't impose or inflict irrational behavior on people who may be suffering just as dearly as them. So this is something that I think that needs to be instituted in the, in, in, in the master plan. We need to consult with psychiatrists and psychologists, and I haven't read anything in there from an expert of a psychiatrist or a psychologist that has dealt, or a child developer who has dealt with kids who are mentally unstable. But thank you very much for listening to me. My name is Mr. Wantwez Davis, and I'm a candidate for Fifth Ward City Councilman. And I hope to someday bring a cure and resolution to the problems that my city suffered. Thank you very much. Cynthia Hanty. Is it Cynthia in the Cynthia in the room? <coughs> Quincy Murphy. Good evening. My name is Quincy Murphy, and um, I come here tonight on behalf of um, the master plan. And um, just recently, I came before your committee, and I presented you guys with a letter to ask you to put together a memorandum of understanding to um, pledge to bring at least $200 million to the north end of Flint and urban communities within the next 30 years. Within the last 30 years, over $30 billion has been generated in the city of Flint. And as a result of that, um, the North...